22 to God be the glory for yet another opportunity to wake up and to behold his grace, his love, his joy, his strength. I'm on fire today. Just came from a jog and outside and I have to go back because I dropped my glove and I have to oh, trace back in the streets, but I'm sure pray for me. But anyway, the Lord is faithful. He is true. He is good. And I don't know if you're feeling like this today that you're feeling like Jeremiah. It's like fire, shut up in my bones, like Jeremiah, right? It won't leave me alone. Well, in Jeremiah 20, we happen to see that verse in the section, verse nine. It says, you know, because Jeremiah, you know, went through a lot of derision. You know, people were talking about him. You remember his feet were in stocks overnight. Uh, the priest put him, it confined him, Pesher, and he was a chief governor. And because Jeremiah gave this news, you know, that was not pleasing to people's ears, they were like, we're not trying to hear that. And Pesher, you know, secured him and he was twisted. His body was twisted in a contraption and they secured him overnight. So his muscles were sore and he went through a lot, but he was like, even though I'm suffering so much, people are talking about me, people, you know, just are mistreating me. I can't turn my back on the Lord. Yes, it says, for since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. People hated me and derision daily. Do you feel like that? Like constantly people are talking about you because you're standing for right you better go back to this chapter. It says, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. He was going to go on strike from, <laughs> he was going to boycott the Bible and the word. And, and sometimes don't we feel like that? Like, you know what, Lord, is it worth it? Uh, all the scorn, all the hatred. But when you think about the goodness of the Lord, woo, and all he has done and what he is to you, hmm? So then he said, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Yes, the Lord is with me. So be encouraged. So many of the people in the Bible went through so much, but God is real. God is true. And he will deliver us in those trying situations. Then we'll be able to have the testimony of Joseph, Genesis 50, 20. You all, they meant it for evil, but God turned it around for great good. Yes. And it says, when I remember thee upon my bed in Psalm 63, 6, and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou has been my help from the past and you still are my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee because thy right hand, Lord, upholdeth me. You know, there is an opera that's out that I'm supposed to see next week, and we know about it, Terrence Blanchard, and it's it's named uh, Fire Shut Up in the Bones, and it's based from a book, New York Times writer Charles Blow. And he was born in Louisiana, and he was born, I think, in 1970, and it talks about his hardships and how he was sexually abused and he went through a lot of trauma and there are a lot of references of the bible in this this opera this production i just pray that it shows redemption that god can make something beautiful out of our brokenness it talks about the frat life in the book it talks about the horrors as far as hazing and group trauma, and a lot of other details, but there's a difference um, because of because of the, the rewriting and yeah, there, there was artistic license taken. But what I'm saying is I don't care 
what type of past that we have, God could take any type of situation and turn it around. He could deliver us from demons of the past generation hold. And God is the Lord of hosts. Yes. And he will, he will show us his will if we're open to it. So don't think that you have to stay in the trauma of the past. God can break the chains. He can break addictions. And this, this opera and the story is about the interior life. And a lot of times we go to church and we want to put on a facade or the uniform and do the works. But God is concerned about the, the what's inside, the interior life, not the exterior life. And he wants real relationship so that we can declare what God said to Jeremiah in the first chapter, before I knew you, before I formed you, I knew you, and I designed this route. We don't have to take what the enemy has put in our life, whether it was a, a older cousin who abused us, whatever. Mm -mm. God still can take that situation and offer freedom and something beautiful. Let him do it. Give your life to him and trust him. And woo, all the places you will go. Thank you, Father, that you're so real in our lives, oh God. Thank you, Father, that you offer real liberty and freedom for all of us, that we don't have to be stuck in the past to what someone has done to us, you know, the, the skeletons in the closet. Oh God, you offer real freedom. So Father Lord, we thank you that we have the fire shut up in our bones, your Holy Spirit, Father. And if we don't, Lord, we want to, we want to give our all to you, give our hearts to you so that you can take residence in our life and take over. Father, you get the glory this Sunday and all of our days for the rest of our days. And this is our last Sunday. You get the glory in Jesus name. Amen.